Hi guys and welcome to the basics of Viz. Uh, we're just going to quickly run through Viz and how we just start using Viz. Um, we're not going to uh, look at any particular features for any particular length of time. We're just going to just do a quick run through about how just to start using Viz. So it's important to know that Viz, um, when you're designing in Viz, um, you've got the, the main design program which is called Viz Artist. But for that to work, the, the back-end database needs to be running because everything in Viz is stored in Viz's own database. And there's a program that controls that database and just maintains it. Um, and that's called Viz Graphics Hub. Uh, the icon looks like this, so if we just double click it, the program looks like this. It's very easy. All you really need to do to start off at very basic level is click Start. Um, once it's started, the program will look like that, and then you're ready to dive into VizArtist. So just double click the VizArtist icon. I'm using VizArtist 3.63, um, but because we're looking at the basic features, there shouldn't be too much difference between versions. Uh, when you get to this stage here, this is you logging into the database so you can access all the features. Um, you can log in using guest mode, I always log in using admin mode, um, and the default password for, for the admin um, user, assuming you haven't changed it, is this VizDB, it's got a capital V and a capital D. I'm just going to log in using that. Once we're in Viz Artist, you'll notice that the, the screen is split up almost into four quadrants. Um, this is the default view. The top left area is your server. Um, think of it a bit like a Windows Explorer window uh, where you can have folders on your left that you can store all your elements in um, and then when you click on a folder you'll see the elements just in this window here. Uh, they'll d be divided up depending on what type of element they are. Uh, so you'll notice there's uh, little tabs at the top here, there's an S, there's an O, there's an M. Um, they do stand for uh, scene, object, material, advanced material and if you're not sure you can use this drop down menu uh, you'll see that as I change it will tell you uh, what each of the tabs are. Fonts, audio clips, or you can just have a look at everything all bundled in at once. Below that is the scene tree, so as you create your scene, um, the construction pieces uh, basically will appear in this scene tree. Um, this is where you add building blocks and elements to your scene. And then to the right of that, in the black window, that is your visualized rep representation of what the scene is going to look like. That is basically what you have created in your tree. Above that uh, is basically the properties window. This will allow you to change all different properties depending on what you have selected. So if you've got a cube in your scene, you'll have properties to change all uh, aspects of the cube, its height, its width, its bevel amount. Uh, it's also where you'll be able to change its position, its scaling, its rotation. Um, along with that there's little tabs where you can also change the camera properties, um, the light properties in the scene and any other scene settings. This includes the mask invert so we can use a mask but you might want to switch what gets seen and what isn't so you might want to see everything underneath the mask you might want hidden or you might want to be able to see everything underneath the mask and hide everything else. Uh, as you can see here we can also change the background colour or we can drag in a background image. Uh, towards the top you'll see there's a row of buttons. Uh, so the first one is server. This is basically shows the server in this top left window. Um, if you click built-ins it will switch 
to um, the the geometry that you can use as building blocks to design your scene. So Viz as in as a default has loads of different shaped objects that you can use: circles, cubes, cylinders, squares. Uh, I always find the Noggy is particularly useful and very flexible. Um, or you can use the polygon to import your own uh, splines, um, rectangles, rings, and there's all different types if you go down the folders on the left as well. Once you've got one of those building blocks in the scene, you can then manipulate it in different ways, and to do that, you will add a plugin on a container plugin. Um, and for instance, if you dragged an alpha onto a cube, you can change its level of transparency. If you dropped an extrude on some on a font that you've added into your scene, you can extrude those letters out in 3D space. And there's various different shaders that can change how something looks, um, how the the scene might work and additional texture sources on top of the images so they might, might be video clips, live inputs or even using a different scene as a texture. At the top we have then the control button when we create a template that we want to allow the operator to change say the name um, of the template and nothing else uh, this control area shows up all the elements that we're allowing the operator to control and we can use that as some basic testing as well to make sure everything's working as it should. The views uh, simply allow us to look at the scene from different angles apart from the main camera that we, we obviously are designing for. Um, so we can have a front-on view, a top-down view and it just gives a different, a different um, aspect to look at how the scene's been constructed. We can also use it to zoom in closer or zoom out of your elements in your scene. To do that I'm just using, I'm holding the Z button on my keyboard and just using my left mouse button clicking and dragging an area that I want to zoom into. Uh, I can then use, so that's using my Z button, I can then use my X button just by hitting X to zoom out. The tree view is simply an expansion of the original tree view. Uh, it's basically the original view but without the server as you can see. It just minimizes the server and maximizes the tree view. The stage um, holds all your animation in the scene um, and then on top of that you've got different variations of keeping the stage view and seeing the server keeping the stage view and obviously having the tree or even having the tree and the server and the stage view all at the same time. The import dialog allows us to import our images, fonts, audio clips. In fact, if you click down on this menu, you can see exactly what can be imported. Uh, we can even import archives of scenes that we've exported. Now to export an archive, we just use the archive button and we drag our scenes that we want to export from this side, from the left hand side of the window to where it says file entry points on the right um, and what it will do, it will just package all these files up, all the um, all the scenes up with all the elements they need into a file called a, um, a VIA file. The config menu allows us to change uh, lots of different uh, configuration uh, aspects of the viz. Most important is the output format. Uh, for most jobs we use now is a 1080i HD output format. We're in the UK so we use the PAL frequency of 50 Hz. Um, obviously we can choose uh, the original PAL SD uh, format, uh, 16 by 9 or 4 by 3 um, same again, we can quickly change to NTSC, 720p, um, or use a defined um, dimension. But we're just going to leave it on 50 hertz because we use that 99% of the time. 
Moving forward onto post, uh, this allows us to create um, rendered clips of our graphics. Uh, we can choose uh, the clip plugin we want to use, in this case a QuickTime clip. We can choose the codec it renders out in. We can choose whether we just want the RGB color or we want to include an alpha channel as well. Uh, whether we want it interlaced or progressive. We give it a file name, we tell it how long the clip we want the clip to be. Now remember in Viz we um, the system uses fields not frames. So for every f one frame there is two fields. So 25 frames or a second of video is actually a duration of 50 fields. Uh, then we give it the width and the height of the video we wanted to create, which is normally the same as our output format anyway. We can then just click the record button, but this would only work if we've got a scene loaded, which we can uh, load from this templates menu, or if you already had a scene open, it just automatically goes in there. Finally, the on-air button allows external um, components to communicate with the viz. These might be uh, pro uh, other Viz programs such as Viz Content Pilot or Viz Trio, and uh, that allows an operator to send uh, commands to open a scene, play the animation, and also send uh, the template, um, the new template text. So if we've got a template and we've allowed a change of text, for instance, a name. Uh, it allows the operator to send that name that they've typed in into the graphic, take it out, and then they might have the same graphic but with a different name that they, they might want to put in. But for that to work, we must be in on-air mode. It, it just allows the external communication from a separate piece of software. To get out of on-air mode, if you uh, can't see how you get out, you can just press the escape button. Finally, uh, this little button here is the commands window. It allows us to uh, debug um, if we're not sure why something isn't working correctly, especially if we're sending commands from an external piece of software into VizArtist. It allows us to see the commands that are being sent as well as um, the actions being taken because of those commands and it's very easy to see if a command is being sent and it, it can't find that particular container or that particular text it has to change um, so that's how we debug using this little command window finally we can show uh, license information and obviously we've got our close button through the middle um, we have our little rubbish can so if we ever want to delete anything we just click and drag it to this rubbish can here we have our time controls we can move forward just by dragging or backwards in time remember this is fields again not frames this button that's keyframes and then down the middle here we have our camera selection we can have multiple cameras and we can select uh, different cameras when we want them. We've also got three main layers in Viz. They can be accessed by this L for layers. It's a layer manager. Mainly you work in the main layer, but if you need to have more than one graphic template on air at one time, we can load different graphic templates into different layers. We only have three layers, so you have to be smart. You can't have an infinite number of layers unless you start looking at different technology or different ways of building things like using transition logic. This snap button is very useful. It allows us to create a snapshot of uh, or basically a screenshot of the uh, whatever is currently in our preview window. And then we can turn on and off uh, different elements and, and they affect things in this preview window so for instance bounding box on and off title safe and uh, graphic safe area we can change it so we can see the key or the rgb color wireframe the p bar shows our performance of the machine um, you'll see the max 
frames or, or fills per second get very very low if you have too much in your scene and you're, you're trying to do too much um, it's going to create your scenes make your scenes go a little bit laggy slow or jittery finally at the bottom of our tree we have our, our save uh, options we can close a scene to open the scene we just double click the scene we'd like to open from our server if we had one and then also we have some operations that we can do with our scene tree at the top of the tree uh, some just quick ones uh, lock and unlock containers show and uh, sorry make visible or or hide selected containers and it doesn't actually hide them in the tree but it, it basically turns them off from the preview window over here uh, we can expand because it's a, a tree based um, building mechanism um, we can expand into the tree so it expands everything into the tree or we can contract and collapse the tree uh, there's some script controls we can zoom in and out which actually only just makes the container uh, the visual containers bigger and smaller uh, we can group and ungroup things um, we can merge groups of uh, into uh, an object uh, we can create groups and we can change the group color and finally we can just rebuild the tree if that's that's necessary and there's there's some sort and search functions that are available as well so that concludes our very brief overview of viz uh, in further tutorials we'll look at actually building basic scenes and uh, getting you up and running designing scenes in Viz Artist. I hope that was useful.